All right, in section one of chapter 16, we're going to look at how the states and national government relate with each other, how they relate with other states, and look at the state constitutions themselves. So how do they relate with the federal government? Our U.S. Constitution created a system of government called federalism, and federalism is the sharing of powers between the national government and the state governments. The Constitution itself grants specific powers to the national government, and these powers, for example, uh, regulating immigration, declaring war, and um, coining money. And these powers are, called, are known as delegated powers. All other powers are either, are either reserved for the states or the people, or they're held concurrently by both the national and the state governments. So the powers that are established by local governments, for example, is a reserved power, which you can see on the right-hand side. Um, also, another reserved power is, is uh, conducting elections. Um, so, an ex so, okay, so that's a reserved power. And then the power to tax, however, is a concurrent power, because both the state and federal government can both levy or raise taxes. And you see that in the middle, those would be concurrent powers that both the state and national governments share. Now, the framers realized that there would be conflict between, there could be conflict and there would be conflict between the federal government and state governments and to try to help, um, try to help with those conflicts, they included in the Constitution in Article 6, Section 2 called the Supremacy Clause. And this clause declares that the Constitution itself and any laws passed by the federal government is to be the supreme law of the land. And this is to ensure that there was no conflict between what law is right or which law is more supreme. The Constitution does that for us. So that's how the supreme. That's how the national government relates with the state governments themselves. So how do states relate with each other? They too also interact with each other, and the Constitution um, established guidelines for that relationship. Um, our U.S. Constitution promotes a cooperative relationship between the states, one that. One way that it does that is through what's called the Full Faith and Credit Clause, which is found in Article 4, Section 1 of the Constitution, and it requires that each state recognize the civil laws and acts of each other state. So, for example, a driver's license issued, issued in one state is valid in all other states. Even if your standards for issuing the license in the state is different or the training requirements are longer or shorter, um, they're still valid no matter where you drive. And also, each state must also recognize decisions of the courts in other states. For example, child support. A ruling in, the ruling in one state of child support goes, it still stays the same even if a spouse was to move. You still have to pay that same amount of child support. So any court ruling is um, recognized. Now the state constitution, um, look at that. When, if you compare the state constitution to the United States constitution, they're much, much longer. Um, and there's some other things that are different to difference between them. But the United States itself has a tradition of a limited form of government. And one way that they guarantee that in the states is uh, found in Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution, which says, or it's called the Guarantee Clause. And it guarantees to every state in the Union that gets into, that's in, introduced in the Union, to have a Republican form of government. Now, generally, a Republican form of government is understood to mean. Um, it would, be, it would be limited and representative form of government. So the Constitution provides the guidelines for how they're going to do that, how the state and local governments are going to provide a limited and representative government. Um, however, each state constitution does outline a specific framework for each state and local government. Characteristics of a state constitution. They're long. Average, 28,000 words. The U.S. Constitution is only 7,400 words. They're frequently amended. On average, they're, are, they're amended 100 times compared to the U.S. Constitution only 27 times. They're rewritten a lot. On average, three constitutions have been rewritten per state, or on average per state, and then compared to, I mean, then you have the Louisiana with the most, and 11 times it's been rewritten it's entirely. And then they're overly detailed and inflexible. The excessive detail to every state constitution makes it hard to adapt during times of change. Qualities. Every state constitution protects civil rights through their own Bill of Rights. Every state constitution has their own Bill of Rights as well, just so you know we have our Bill of Rights in the U.S. Constitution. Um, every state constitution pre prescribes respect for equality of citizens and provides for due process of law, meaning you have the right to go to 
trial to have your case heard if the state's prosecuting for something. They also, in every state constitution, provides a limited state government in which the powers are shared among a legislative branch, an executive branch, and a judicial branch, just like our U.S. Constitution. Now, some of the problems of a state constitution um, is that, again, they're long and frequently amended and stuff and, re and not able to, they're inflexible. Um, but the U.S. Constitution contains what's called fundamental law, meaning that the de meaning that the basic political principles of government is is written in the Constitution. So it's just very fundamental framework and uh, structure of which they can work within. Compared to the state constitution, they they contain both fundamental law and statutory law. And statutory law is a very detailed and specific type of law. For example, the Minnesota Constitution contains a provision that citizens do not need a license to sell produce grown in their gardens. So that's a very detailed law that you're not going to find something in um, the U.S. Constitution, for example. It's not that kind of detail or not statutory type of law. Um, because state constitutions are so easily amended, they contain many examples of statutory law, like the garden, you know, not having a license to grow, produce gar garden or produce to produce produce in a garden in your house or your yard. Um, so details you would find in the U.S. Const these are details you wouldn't find in the U.S. Constitution. And another problem relates to the excessive detail is the portions of many state constitutions have become very obsolete. You know, there are very obsolete laws out there that don't even apply anymore, and they're still in their state constitutions. Um, solutions, state constitutions should focus more on fundamental law and contain less detail. Some states choose to completely rewrite their con constitution. Other states use the amendment process to change their constitutions. For example, Kansas has one of the shortest state constitutions at about 11,000 words. Kansans have revised their constitution through amendment rather than re rather than by rewriting it completely. And Kansas can vote up to up to five amendments at a time at a regularly scheduled general election or at special elections called by the state. And that's some ways to limit the length or the detailed state constitutions.